This guy made a typo over here. He says we need more memo videos, but I think what he was trying to say is we, we need more emo videos, and that's true. I, I haven't really been um, doing a lot of, oh wait, hold on. He, he meant to say meme videos. Hi everyone, Seth, Seth and boy, boy Tano, Tano here. here. The internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new modern baseball record, Holy 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 Ghost. These guys are a Pennsylvania band, and this is their new album on Run For Cover Records. And if you're familiar with Run For Cover Records, you know this band's on Run For Cover Records. They are playing that sweet suburban blues. Emo! Now, in the past, I have been pretty critical of the current crop of emo bands out there. Many of them bring absolutely no new ideas to the table and just rehash uh, pretty much everything that any seminal emo, emo band has done in the 90s and the 2000s, uh, except with like way less songwriting talent. However, this modern baseball record did in fact take me by surprise. Now, it's not reinventing the genre or anything like that. Uh, it's got some indie and punk roots, which are mellowed out into some very melodic and poetic pop rock. The mix is pretty good and showcases very vividly the guitars, the bass, the vocals, the drums. Everything is coming through loud and clear. It's super crisp. From what I understand, this is the band's first record that is not self-recorded, and it sounds like they have transitioned pretty nicely from the self-recording phase to the studio phase. The performances are lively, they are energetic, they're in the moment. There's definitely chemistry to the performances on this record. That can most definitely be said of the vocals, which are usually pretty passionate and compelling and emotional, though I will say that their voices, they're not so distinct that I could pick them easily out of a lineup but they do hold their own. They actually hold a tune on these songs. Uh, the singing on this record doesn't just like devolve into obnoxious, painful whinging. And what I think is truly the selling point of this record is that the band here, they're really penning sharp sing-along choruses on a lot of these tracks. Since I started listening to this thing, there are a lot of musical moments that are still stuck in my head, like uh, the track The Wedding Singer, the really sweet guitar lick the album opens up with. A sweet little melody that coasts beautifully over the driving guitars and bass. Now, the lyrics also are nothing all that revolutionary. A lot of middle class lethargy and malaise and uh, sadness, very sentimental at points, but occasionally self-aware enough for a touch of self-critique or uh, introspection, uh, kind of breaking the fourth wall a little bit and mentioning uh, the band. I guess what I can congratulate this album on though is that they're not too melodramatic. And I think the chorus on the closer, Just Another Face, is fantastic as well. I also like the lyrical dynamic of this track, where essentially the song dives into a lot of self-doubt, uh, a lot of, I guess, low self-esteem, but then looks forward to the future with a, a lot of hope and ambition. It's a little bittersweet and poses the idea that uh, the potential that uh, this person holds is just not yet seen and he's working toward that. I also thought the uh, abrupt ending on the song Anyam was pretty funny given that the uh, mantra at the very end of the track is, uh, tell me this is forever, tell me this is forever. So there are some smart parts of this album. The issue, the main issue that I think for a lot of people is gonna be is just that it's so steeped in the, the general sound of uh, nearly every significant emo band out there that has a kind of accessible sound. It's also criminally short, and I think a few tracks pale in comparison to others, uh, maybe because the choruses weren't that good, or uh, in the case of Breathing in Stereo, uh, the, the whole track kind of blurs by in an aggressive but forgettable display. But like a lot of good emo records, and I think this is a decent emo record, uh, this album has a strong element of catharsis to it. There's a great sense of just kind of letting it all out on this record, learning about yourself in the process of going through hardship. There's some pretty great anthemic odes to life's difficulties on this album that I thought were um, pretty nice. Some emo purists, like this guy over here, uh, might think that the album is a little too poppy 
and nothing altogether new. And, uh, you know, I'm not arguing against that. I agree. Uh, I just don't necessarily think that a poppy emo record or uh, uh, an emo record that doesn't bring that many new ideas to the table isn't the worst thing in the world, as long as there's good tunes on it. Tunes that are memorable, lyrics that are worth singing along with. This LP, unfortunately, is not the exciting reinvention that emo is long overdue for, uh, but for an album that celebrates what made emo so good in the 2000s, uh, I think it's decent. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe, please don't die. Please hydrate, eat some fruits and veggies. Woo! Modern baseball, holy ghost, forever.